What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. If I ever find a little glasses of business. Dead meat. Welcome to the Dead Meat Podcast, your horror safe haven. I'm Chelsea. And I'm James. We're married and we like to get scared together. Yes. Sorry if I still sound stuffy. I had a COVID rebound, baby. Mm-hmm. I'm feeling better. Ugh, what a nightmare. Never again, please. <laughs> Molly's here. Yeah, and so is Lucy. I see her poking her head oh, in. So all the- We'll see how this goes because they're not fans of each other yet they're gonna skin a marink each other dude it's gonna get skin a marinky in here yeah man we have skin a marinked this week i think it's skin a marunk skin a marink skin a marunk yeah yeah we did it we got we skin-a-mar- finally watched it god been i've been skin a marunk i've been wanting to watch this thing for months and months it feels like and we finally got to see it's it. on shutter yes it is streaming now so you don't have to pirate it which you shouldn't have been doing. Oh, that happened. I mean, to be fair, it it contributed to the word of mouth, I think, and Mm. kind of mythologized it a bit. Like, everyone wants to see this movie so bad that we're pirating it. Yeah, somehow it made two million bucks in the theaters. $15,000 budget, baby. That's some Blair Witch numbers, baby. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, uh, shocked that it had a theatrical release because... It's not a narrative film. This is an experimental movie. Yeah. I mean, there is kind of a narrative to it. There's a through line. But if you are familiar with Stan Breckage, kind (laughs) of. Yeah. Big Breckage fans. You know, all our Breckage heads listening. I guess that's. I mean, he said Kyle Edward Ball, the guy who directed this, said Mm -hmm. that that was a an inspiration yeah he also cited like kubrick and lynch david lynch to more uh you know uh, more accessible directors too Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) what do you laugh it's i know we're going back to film school baby (laughs) i mean no this plays like a movie that you would watch in a film class really does where you're like struggling to stay awake and if depending on how tired you are and if it's college you're probably tired yeah and um you you might be mad at it a lot of people were mad at this movie even though it's not meant to be a narrative movie. It's not like a lot of people were like, man, I'd like this a whole lot more if more stuff happened, but that's not what this movie is. It's definitely it's, not what it is. That's not what they were. That's not what he was trying to make. This movie. <laughs> it's a fucking mood piece, dude. I think if you have the patience for it is terrifying. I really liked this movie a lot. <laughs> I enjoyed it and I think it was fucking terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad that you liked it. I was I was wondering how you were feeling. I didn't, I didn't let it. you know my feelings yet until basically just now. Yeah. Because you were like, I really liked it. I was like, yeah. Did but you have to sit on it a little bit? A little bit, but no, I enjoyed it in the mo- in the moment too. Uh, I did watch this. We came, me and Gressel came back from a party last night, and so I was a little enhanced. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I wanted to watch this movie at night. Yes. I didn't want to watch it on an afternoon with like. Uh, no. The window glare and us like just there to take notes. I wanted to get into it. No ex- meshes of the afternoon. <laughs> That's a my Darren joke. Okay. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. Sure. Uh, yeah, I, I wanted to really give it its all because I knew it was a kind of. Um, it's not found footage, but it's not. I I don't know why I thought it was this yeah. whole time. I mean, it's 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 its own thing, I guess. It's people have tried to kind of put it in the found footage ca- like analog yeah or category but i it's don't one person get real mad at people calling it analog it's... but it's kind of analog he even cites analog uh definitely as a visual inspiration but it's not found footage it's not found footage so if you think that found footage is a prereq for analog horror then it's not but yeah i i just wanted to watch it at night lights off real dark because I figured that would be the most effective way to get the point across, and it was. This is very much, and I had this thought while watching it, and of course I saw a lot of people saying it online, it's very House of Leaves-esque. We bring yeah. that book up all the fucking time on this podcast, but this is probably the most applicable, I think, in terms of tone. And, I mean, it's, it's got a house where the windows and the doors just disappear. Yeah, impossible and, spaces. Mm-hmm. Liminal spaces is a term that gets thrown out uh, I around this. I guess hallways are kind of an ultimate liminal space. Yeah. It's a pa- it, that you, you go through them. Yeah, they're not places to be. They're places to uh, traverse. Yeah. Transverse. Yeah. Yeah. 
I think if you can get into it, if you can buy into it, it's rewarding and scary and unnerving. Uh, I, I think so much of it is so dark. You, you like get swallowed up in the darkness. There, there are probably cumulatively minutes of this movie with nothing on with screen. With nothing on screen. It's just black. You have to watch this in the dark. Yes. At night. Uh, exactly. Or just in the, if you can be somewhere where there's just no light mm-hmm. and it's quiet. A theater would have been cool. A theater would have been cool depending on the audience. Yes. If the audience was getting annoyed or impatient, that would it suck. would ruin that in the entire experience, I think. Yeah. I think if you're in a room where everyone's really antsy and or just not vibing with it. And if anyone's making jokes, like yeah. that would fucking ruin it and that would suck. If if you did see it in a theater, I hope you didn't do that, even if you didn't like it. Because that's the thing. A lot of people really didn't like this movie, which is fine. It's a very uh, particular type of film. Again, it's experimental. You don't have to like this type of movie. I just can't stand when people are like, people who say they like this are just lying to themselves. <laughs> yeah. like, it's, oh, no, fuck your, like, people like different things. Yeah. You know? It's it's cool if or you didn't it like it. it's just boring and not scary. Yeah. Like, I mean, which is an opinion that you can have, yeah. but don't, don't assume that everyone Everyone's found it. Everyone's trying to be contrarian or something. Yeah. Yeah. We're not just like huffing farts here. For some of us, it really works because it evokes such, uh, I don't know, primal fears. And, you know, we always talk about how Stephen King is really good at capturing the adolescence mindset. Uh, you know, the the like 12-year-old, 13-year-old, just how it feels to be that age. Mm-hmm. This movie really captures how it feels to be like a four-year-old, five-year-old. Yeah, the age where you have some of your first really long-term memories, and those memories are everything is really big, mm-hmm. and everything just fe- yeah feels larger than life because you're small, and everything is new and confusing. And when you think back to them, they're kind of garbled because of your inexperience at that point may have like corrupted the memories or just like uh warped the perception at the time to where you're like wait what like i have a weird memory of uh seeing i think it was like an easter bunny at like a union party at a union hall yeah and like it was like a terrifying easter and he's like a monster in my head and it's like obviously if i were to watch a an objective video camera version of that event i would see oh it's a guy in a suit but in my head it's such like a terrifying weird experience that was just warped from being so i don't know young and afraid Mm -hmm. and that's what this movie feels like yeah if you as a kid were if you had a basement growing up and you were scared of your basement especially when you flip the lights off and you booked it upstairs as soon as you turn the lights off this movie you might fuck with this movie yeah i would do that for sure and then there's this other thing that when we were a little older when we were like i don't know 12 or 13 uh you you know those like flash jump scare things uh one of them was kikia oh would you like i think you told me this where you would set it to go and you would Make like an obstacle course. Yeah, oh, I have told you. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we would put a whole bunch of shit on the stairs, like a fucking, like my dad shot back and like just pillows and shit and turn off all the lights, start one of those, uh, like one of the extra, like the, when like Regan pops up where it's the maze or something. Yeah, or like that shot of like the car driving. (laughs) Yeah. And the bend and like the thing pops up. (laughs) We would like start one of those and then me and my friends would like run to try to get up the stairs and like fucking throw each other down it just to like be in the basement when like, the big scare happened. Fucking hell. Oh, the fuck was Basements. the matter with us? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I guess we are, obviously, we're going to go through the whole movie. It's going to be a <laughs> weird discussion because it, it it's not like there's not a plot, but it's very moody. There's lots of shots of just kind of nothing. I can't stress that enough, how there are shots of nothing, but even the shots of things, they're like corners of things they're they're obscured things everything is obscured you hardly there's maybe two shots where you see the profile of a face other than that the only humans that you see in shots are usually like their Their feet feet. maybe a hand i don't even remember or the back of a head which is real scary in context but most things are are like framed in a way so that you're not able to see them and it's uh it can be frustrating, but I think it also is important to add to the tension. There's just tension throughout this whole hour 40, which uh, some people think that's too long. 
Uh, I did. I thought it would be too long going into it. I think it's fine. Yeah. In the end, I think it works. Yeah. Um, all the shots in this remind me of God. I'm trying to remember. It might be a shot in Rosemary's Baby. It was in some Polanski movie that I remember talking about in film school, where the framing of it is it's like someone on the phone. And the guy who's on the phone is like just behind a doorway. And the way that it's framed, you watching it instinctively kind of like lean one way because you want to see. Yeah. Or like eavesdrop almost. And there's a lot of framing in this that does a similar thing where you want to see what's around a corner or maybe you don't. Yeah. <laughs> maybe you're ex- it, it frames it's that it's it, uh, you're extremely scared of what could be lurking around a corner or behind a door i don't know and also every shot in this is infuriatingly good like very it's very good so compositions fucking, on like a it, basic level yeah because it's just in the director's parents house yeah he shot it at his childhood home again fifteen thousand dollar budget which if you've never made something fifteen thousand bucks i mean that's that's a lot of, i would love to just have fifteen thousand bucks <laughs> that's great but when you're making something that's nothing that's yeah. i think the last like student film I made, we had 10k. Okay, so that 15, was a student film. Yeah, 15k yeah. is not a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Um, so Clerks 25. Clerks was I think 26, and then the soundtrack was also 26. Oh so sure. Like 52. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but that was a different time. In 94. Yeah, that was 1994. Yeah, but every shot in this is such a great example of how to work with a low budget and a specific location. It was shot digitally, and then grain was post. added. Yeah. Uh, film is so expensive. Yeah, you can't you can't shoot on film if you got 15,000 bucks. Hour 40, yeah, I don't. Mm-hmm. Not, no, 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 no. But uh, they do, I think, a pretty good job of uh, adding the grain. I did see some people say that they could start to see repeated. Mm, the, uh, the beginning and end of the loop of yeah, the grain. Which, whatever, it's fine. Yeah. I, what I love about the grain that they add um especially with those pitch black shots is that it literally does what people are afraid of the dark are yes i had that thought too (laughs) you're you're staring at these black images and you're like is Is there a person do i see something there yeah and you can't tell yeah you know like when you close your eyes and you get the kind of blips and blops of of color or just there's distortions and Mm -hmm. your brain wants to find patterns because we're human and we especially want to find faces and everything that's why people find jesus and toast or whatever (laughs) yeah but this movie because there's so much visual grain and there's so many shots where there's not really much going on your in your mind if you let it goes a little nuts and sometimes you think is the camera moving yes or is it it's hard to tell it's really hard to tell and i think that those also pay off later because there is a shot where the camera does move when Kevin, the four-year-old boy, he goes into the bedroom at the end and like trucks away an impossibly it's long so distance cool. from the door. I literally have chills talking There's about it. There's some very cool shots that's towards a, the end of this that are... That's a very House of Leaves type thing. And then the whole like, is there something in the darkness? That pays off in the film's final shot. Fuck that, man. <laughs> we'll talk about it, but... I looked away from the screen. I was like, I can't look at this I know, thing. There was, there was a thing where you asked me, like, did this happen? Because I had to look away from the screen. I, I did. Like, yeah. There were a few times that I just was, nah, I'm not, I'm not looking at this right now. I can't. It's too scary. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, the director um, said that there are a few shots where he, he won't say which ones because it's fun for people to find, but there are humans. In, in the background? There. Yeah. Okay. Which is horrifying yeah uh, you said kyle edward ba- ball, ball. Mm-hmm. yes so he filmed this like we said in his childhood home using some of his childhood toys. i love this house by the way oh yeah the, the, i mean as much as i can piece together what it looks like because mm-hmm. again it's all very abstracted but that stairwell with the wood paneling and those mm-hmm. kind of hanging bulby lights very mid-century there's the like a TV rock wall with the chevron yeah the chevron wall. like what and there's a rock kind of feature wall too yeah. very 70s kind of house do we know how old uh this gentleman is that's a good question I'm i would not... guess 22 or some shit I feel, like that i, I yeah. bet it's like a cane pixels type situation and where it's just like that's why i said the fact that every shot in this is beautiful i'm just like fuck it's infuriating it's so great <laughs> Let's find out. I'm, but the internet's weird because it thinks Lauren Levera is like 45. So. <laughs> that's true. I think that's been corrected lately. Oh, has it? With a, uh, I'm assuming more accurate age put there, but. I don't know how old he is. I cannot 
find his age. Okay. I'm assuming he's a younger person. Uh, maybe not, though. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? He got his start on YouTube as well. Oh, yeah? He has oh, yeah. a YouTube channel where he um, people can, like, submit descriptions of nightmares and dreams that they've had, and he makes shorts and stuff. And then he made a proof of concept called Heck, Heck which mm-hmm. would eventually become Skin and Marink. I think Heck is 20 minutes long. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know if he'll still be doing those going forward, because I'm guessing he's going to get some uh I'm some so options. curious where you go from this. <laughs> yeah. Do yeah. you go more narrative and straightforward? Maybe, Do because you... cause then you can reach a more... Uh, a wider audience and clearly he knows how to film things in a scary way. So if he were to combine that with something that was a little bit more accessible, uh, he could be making bank and, you know, a really good movie if he wanted to some, you know, experimental filmmakers often just stay in that realm because that's what they're interested in making. So my dream, like, again, we've, we've, I've pitched this idea on the podcast before, but now that we are technically officially a production company, Mm -hmm. my dream version of House of Leaves where it's kind of an anthology where a different person does every little narrative that get they all get nested into each other. I think he would be great. Kane Pixels would be great. And then I think you get someone like Mike Flanagan to do the real world stuff with like Johnny Truant or whatever his name is. That'd be dope. The kind of more like framing device would this that would have to be a series though i feel i don't think you can compress that book into a movie right it'd be you could do it if it was a long movie because i'm just thinking if you i don't know if it, it would depend i just hate the idea of house of leaves having breaks in it like a tv series i guess i just think it would make it so much less scary what about our horror adaptation of wayside stories that's another one james and i want to get the rights to wayside school i'm glad you fucking reminded me because we uh, were very drunk for this conversation that was was (laughs) post-wedding a party that was the drunkest i've been in years and so like a few days after that you were like do you remember us having that conversation? I was like, not until just now, yeah. but it's a great idea. <laughs> I want to adapt the Wayside School books into- But would that be a movie or a series? I mean, I was imagining a movie, no, like but a it would be a good, that would be a good See, series because it's, series, yeah. they're all kind of little stories. Mm-hmm. Loved those books. Anyway, <laughs> back to Skin of Marink. <laughs> yeah, so Skin of Marink says it takes place in 1995, just kind of says that. And uh, basically, you know, it's a it's a dad and the two kids, a four year old named Kevin, a uh, non disclosed age six year old. I would imagine Kaylee, a couple of yeah years older sister Kaylee. And I think the parents are divorced. So the mom's out of the picture, and Kaylee doesn't want to talk about mom. She says later, but uh, the only bit of clear. Uh, you know, direction of what is happening in this movie is early on. You hear the dad on a phone call saying, Hey, he's okay, but I think he's talking to the mom. Yeah. Hey, he's okay. But Kevin fell down the stairs and hit his head. That's all we get. So obviously the most common interpretation of this whole movie that I've seen online is that it is all Kevin in a coma. Yeah. Or some, or he's dying or that's, the most common interpretation I ran into is Which well. works, for it sure. It works. Yeah. I think it's the least interesting eh, I interpretation. Think it, I think it's fine. Yeah, I guess if you're looking at clues that come later, it does make sense. But there are other readings of this that I really, really like. And I'll try and give credit where credit's due to some of them because they're very specific. And you see the one about the uh, it being Yes, the, the director. director I liked that yeah, a lot. That's yeah. a good one, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that's the... The appeal of experimental films is that bunch of different ways to interpret it. Yeah, like Mulholland Drive. David Lynch says that it that there is a reading of it. I think on the DVD that I had in college, there's clues from him. I forget if they're on the box or if there's something, but he there's a little thing with clues that are almost a way to decode the movie. It I mm. I don't know, but that's part of the fun is everyone can put their own spin on it and i mean if you're looking at what this director's done in the past he's adapted stuff from people's dreams he's made um short films of of dreamscapes or nightmares and what are dreams if not just everyone kind of putting their own spin on them that's like a hundreds thousands of years old tradition 
you putting know, their own spin on what? Pe- reading people's dreams, yeah. what they mean, interpreting dreams. We still don't really know what dreams are, which sure, is weird. Yeah. So I don't know. I think maybe it's intentional that it's kind of a oh yeah Rorschach a little bit. So yeah, we we get that line of dialogue, and then uh, the kids. And again, you're not seeing any of these kids. You're not seeing any of these characters. You're, you for, can hear them. It there is. It's weird. There's some captioning. Yeah, some line. There's some selective captioning mm-hmm. that pops up every once in a while because the the audio quality of this thing is very um garbled. I'm it's trying fuzzy. to fuzzy. It's very fuzzy. It's very if you watch an old tape that has been played over and over and over again, like a cassette, you start to get that weird kind of like quality. I love the way it sounds. I like it too. I really enjoy it. Yeah, there, there's fuzz to the audio as much as there is to the video. Everything is just like distorted and um, just snowy. It's just real snowy. But the kids uh, are like, hey, dad disappeared. And then the windows and doors to the house start disappearing. And the way it's done is such like a fucking 60s sitcom style. Uh-huh. Like you see the door and then it's like, blue, 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 and then like it disappears. And some of them, the camera even kind of like moves. It's not a perfectly done yeah. in camera trick, which is fine. It's very low budget, yeah. which is kind of fun. Yeah. The toilet disappears. Mm-hmm. Um, you have to replace it with garbage with cans. With a bucket. Yeah. <laughs> uh huh. I wrote near the beginning, like, after a few notes where I wrote like, wow, this is this looks gorgeous. The lighting in this is great. I am wondering how this is going to be an hour 40. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because I had no idea where this thing was going to go. <laughs> yeah, I saw some people being like, the movie started and I was like, is, it can't look like this the whole time. The can it? It first does. 30 minutes are the slowest, yeah. I think. When oh, yeah. the dad first disappears and it's them just kind of like, uh... They're, okay. They decide that they should sleep downstairs, which makes sense instead of uh, upstairs, which is like a scary area for them. And then here's the other thing that we haven't mentioned at all yet. They put on cartoons. Yeah. And these cartoons, which were all uh, public domain, it says so in the very beginning of the movie, all f- cartoons play. Yeah, there's like some of Iwerks yep, I and that. Fleischman cartoons, like proto Betty Boop. And uh, was it... Uh, Melody or or the is it like also kind of proto Looney Tunes like a, a before little bit. Bugs Bunnies Bugs yeah they're Bunnies. like these 30s and 40s old cartoons and they're playing throughout the movie the kids have a, them on the TV as kind of a distraction but they also provide almost a soundtrack mm-hmm. uh, the images of those cartoons are creepy in themselves but then when you're seeing them on an old tube TV and with the audio distorted. I mean, some of the imagery in the cartoons directly relates to what's happening. Like early on, they go to sleep and they they wake up later. They're like, I think it's time to get up, but there's no windows or doors, so they can't tell. And the cartoon is like a little thing trying to stay in bed, doesn't want to get up. And then another cartoon, it shows two two like kids in bed who die and float up to heaven. I was like, oh, that's foreboding. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's one where it's a giant spider trying to get two bugs. Yeah, like in their web, yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, they, the, they're all very intentionally chosen. And and very well chosen. I, I really like them. I will say this movie, I I think if you're sensitive to flashing lights, oh, yeah. this might not be for you. Oh, we were also adjusting the volume throughout because this movie gets loud with oh, my its gosh. scares. Because it, 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 it lulls you into... You think it's going to be this quiet the whole time, and then it gets super loud, mm-hmm. and I shit myself. Or, yeah, or it just, there are a few times when the static in the background just slowly grows and crescendos, and you're like, it, it gets to a point where it's just so unnerving. Like, the whole movie is, is unnerving. That's what it is. I was tense the entire time yeah. because once it's established that this movie can and will use jump scares <laughs> yeah i'm not comfortable the entire time this isn't like a oh it's just creepy there's no jumps but it's just this atmosphere that's really <sighs> scary and that's and yes that is the majority of it but every once in a while something will really but not enough to give you the relief almost there are scenes where yeah. it's like i would have liked to jump scare there yes that's why it's so <laughs> uncomfortable because you don't get there were there were some scenes where I was like, okay, and there's a guy, okay, and there's a guy, and, okay, and something is it right there in that court? You know, I, I I was editing them in in my head because I almost wanted that because I was so 
fucking like uncomfortable. I had to fucking take this one for a walk when we were done and it was like two in the morning. I didn't like that. Yeah, no. I didn't like that at all. No. It's real dark out there. The dog got scared a couple times. The, yeah, Molly got jump scared by this movie. Yeah, she got skin a marine. Did you get skin a marine? Did you get skin a marine? Did you get skin a marine? <laughs> yeah. You little dummy. <laughs> I heard that little girl. Yeah, she makes she snorts. She's a little piggy. Yeah. <laughs> She's a little Shih Tzu. She has a smushy face and she can't breathe. We nope. bred them not to breathe. Sorry, not us speci- specifically, Humans. just people, just human people. beings. <laughs> hey, want to talk to you about our sponsor this week, Daggrass. I've heard from many people that Skinnamarink is very good with some enhancement. But I can't think of many worse movies to watch if you accidentally get too high. If you want a gentle buzz instead of a slow boat to hell, Daggrass is reviving the pleasure of the casual smoke so you can chill out without the stress. Daggrass is legal, organic, smokable hemp that relaxes your body and mellows your mind. Their 100% organic pre-roll joints are low in THC and high in CBD, so you can enjoy all the effects of CBD while keeping a clear head. Daggrass also offers CBD gummies made with the same high-quality hemp. Easy to dose and the effects come on smooth. It really is like having a glass of wine versus drinking the entire bottle. The best part is that all Daggrass products are federally legal for ages 21 and over and it'll ship right to your door anywhere in the US. Right now, Daggrass is offering our listeners 20% off your first order when you go to daggrass.com slash deadmeat. Go to daggrass.com slash deadmeat for 20% off your first order. One more time, that's daggrass.com slash dead meat but yeah i think something that i like about this is it reminds me of being a, a kid and how creepy even just the house at night felt yeah like you're supposed to stay in your room at night yes and even just wandering out down the hall into like the living room where it's extra quiet and everything just feels all dead would freak me out. It's the spaces where you're used to seeing people, but they're all in bed now. Yeah. And you're a little kid. And it's weird. It's very weird. So eventually these kids start hearing noises and a voice in the house. Yeah. Them. And there's a shot where there's a chair on the ceiling all of a sudden. Mm-hmm. And uh, this voice tells Kaylee, the six-year-old girl, to come upstairs. Come, up, come upstairs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're getting Fuck. creepy voices. <laughs> And uh, she goes into the parents' bedroom where you see the dad sitting on the bed. You just see his lower half. It's like the cow and chicken parents. And uh, yeah, he's yeah. sitting there in his like, plaid pants. And he tells her to look under the bed. Mm-hmm. And all of us are like, no, thanks. Don't do We're no, good. Don't look under the bed, please. And she Thank does. Uh, and there's nothing. There's nothing. <laughs> but then when she gets back up, you see the mom on is the other sitting side there the bed, with her back away to from us. Her. Yeah. This was creepy. This was a really cool use of the captioning. The mom says, I need you to, and it's just the half of those captions. It's like, I need you to, and then it says, close your eyes is the second half of the captions. And it really weirded me out. And she says, there's someone here. And then there's a scream and a cut and there's like a crunchy Crunch, like sound. Like a neck breaking noise maybe. Yeah. It's a, some kind of breakage. I think it's right around here we get the Barbie doll jump scare too. There's like toys on the ceiling. Oh yeah, the doll. The the, oh, the doll on the ceiling got me. That's the that first big jump. I think. When, oh, because there's also like a high pitched scream. I think she gets startled by her brother and she oh, screams. Okay, and that that got Molly. It did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that was the moment. Very high pitched. Yeah. Mm-hmm, very loud. And then yeah, there's there's just toys and stuff on the wall. The voice uh, tells the sister to get up and some. I I didn't catch what he said again. It's very hard to hear sometimes but that's fine mm-hmm. he tells her to go to the basement yeah I, th- this one we did turn off captions we yes, usually we, did we watch not movies have the captions on we we usually watch movies that aren't comedies with captions this one we just decide to kind of like let us hear it so i didn't hear every line mm-hmm. i couldn't understand every word but i also didn't want to constantly see captions of like footsteps yeah 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 like groaning sound speaking of which the the footsteps folly 
uh, the director has, I, I believe, has said. The fo- how, Foley? Foley. Oh, I'm okay. sorry. I, I don't know why. Footstep I... Foley. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would be like. That would be like a guy stepping on the foot of like a prince and it starts a world war. Uh, it, would, it would go down as the footstep folly. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, the foley. I'm sorry. Uh, he has said how difficult it was to f- correctly get foley of sock feet on carpet. Uh-huh. And so when you hear the foley of these kids walking around, it does sound like video game music or sound effects, like early video game, just like and like at first, I didn't even know what it was until I was like, "Oh, that's them walking around." Okay. Yeah, yeah. But I, I like how unsettling it is and how just off it feels. Mm-hmm. For sure. So the sister, uh, yeah, goes into the basement, and I'm mad because I don't want to go down there. I don't want to go into this house's basement. <laughs> Fuck that shit. I think that's when the brother follows her down there, and that's when we hear her say, "Kevin, I'm scared. I feel strange." Yeah. And we see her legs are crossed. Right? It's this like cut off shot where it's her leg. She's sitting with her yeah. legs crisscrossed. And then it cuts to her face and she has no eyes and no mouth. And it's scary and loud. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, there's the scary male voice tells Kevin to sleep and the cartoons st- start glitching out, which is freaky. This is great. It's- this honestly really scared me. I think because the cartoons playing on the TV, you get so used to them and he cuts to them so often that they're almost comforting when you see them. Because, which is the whole point. That's why the kids put them on. Yeah. It's like, okay, we're just looking at these weird cartoons now. Nothing really happens when the cartoons are on the TV. So this is like a safe space. <laughs> but then they start glitching out. Like there's visual noise. And then is this when it's the rabbit? It's the loop. So yeah. So it starts looping itself. It's like a rabbit antagonizing a dog. And the rabbit, like, does this thing with his hands where he, 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 like, shrinks himself with his hands. Yeah, he's got one hand on top, one hand on the bottom. He brings them together. And as he does it, it's like putting himself into a box. And when he and his pushes body, like, it down, he makes himself and disappear. And it just keeps looping that over and over again with this music. Mm-hmm. And it is so weird and creepy I don't know. I, just describing it, it sounds not very scary, but in the moment, it's so scary. And then it plays into later. Yes. Which <laughs> I didn't realize. It, it's one of those things where in the moment, I didn't fully understand the connection. And then later I'm reading and I'm like, oh, that's, oh, fuck. That's great. That's mm-hmm. great. Yeah. Because again, like this movie, I saw a lot of people say, yeah, I took an edible and watched this and it was great. I like was kind of like dozing in and out of watching it, which, you know, most movies, that's not how you want to watch it. You don't want to watch something like half asleep. But when we watched it last night, I was tired after having come home from this party. And there were some shots where like, I was kind of struggling to keep my eye and it works for this movie. Yeah. Cause like, you're not missing plot stuff and it adds to that dreamlike quality or nightmare like quality of the whole movie. So, Mm -hmm. you know, I saw one person say that, their girlfriend put it on as they went to sleep in bed and they were like falling asleep and watching it and then like would be jarred awake by a noise or something. And like, yeah, that is one way to watch it. And I bet it would be fucking effective. It'd be too. terrifying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm glad we didn't watch this in our room. I, we, I know we watched it in the living room it on the couch. It would have been really scary. I instead think. of, yeah, yeah. After that footage of the cartoon, we hear the male voice say he wants to play. Want to play. (laughs) And you start to hear that music again from the disappearing rabbit. It comes back. You can Mm -hmm. hear it in the background. And the the voice tells Kevin, it says, put the knife in your eye. And we just look at each other like, what the fuck, man? And then you get a sound effect. And and you you, you just hear sobbing and screaming. And you see, you just see blood kind of spattered on a cabinet. Oh, yeah. At first. Yeah. Yeah. This isn't the looping. No, 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 no. That's later. Yeah. I don't know. I just, again, it's one of those movies where it's just describing weird visuals and we're just doing kind of weird uh, abstract poetry almost. Before this movie started, I almost said to you aloud, I almost said, what do you think is going to end up being more enjoyable to watch? This or Mad God? More enjoyable to watch? Yeah. And, uh, or alternatively, which one would you watch again? Hmm. I might watch this again 
because now kind of having an, a certain interpretation of it, I want to go back and look at, do you know? like I would watch this again. Yeah. Yeah. Like, again, Mad God is just so emotionally exhausting. I mean... And so is this. Yeah. But in a different way. Mm -hmm. This is less gross, I oh, think, too. Oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah, there's, no, there's no pooping <laughs> into mouths. <laughs> yeah. I think that contributes to it. <laughs> I was able to eat during this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what were you fucking... You were, like, eating rice out of a glass bowl and just getting every last grain of it. You were just... I was clink, hungry. Clink, 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 and, like... Can't even hear the kids oh already. Oh, my gosh. I... Dude, I must get that from my dad. That's one of my mom's number one complaints about... <laughs> just, like, a thing that has been driving my mom insane for decades at this point is my dad. I didn't say Whenever anything. he eats anything, it's clink, clink, clink. I get every little bit. That's fine. Like, you know, you're hungry. You're still recovering. I'm get the calories. into my parents. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> I'm trying to listen to this quiet movie. <laughs> clink, clink, clink. Get all the rice. <laughs> yeah, if you went and saw this in a movie theater and you ate snacks, oh, sorry. You were, oh, yeah. No nachos during this that one, man. That sucks. <laughs> yeah, the last kind of stretch of this movie, I. It, it's cool how the imagery gets more and more confusing and you don't really know what you're looking at half the time. Mm -hmm. Every once in a while, there's a shot that kind of grounds you in, okay, these are clearly the Legos on the floor. Which are apparently anachronistic Legos. There was a I very... Saw, <laughs> hope someone got fired for that blunder. A very astute Lego fan posted a comment, all tongue in cheek, but with the fucking like, part numbers of how the ones in this movie would not have existed in 1995. Yeah. Well, because I think someone someone spotted there was like an Amelia Earhart Lego set, someone's, which is from 2011, I think. And then <laughs> okay. the little brick separator. The separator. There was a different kind that would have been around in 95, apparently. That's so funny. <laughs> I wonder if we'll ever get to the point where we're like, citing numbers of lego parts because we we haven't finished our titanic lego set no, we still we need to, to. but i like legos with my brief uh our brief little interaction with they're them. they're very zen mm -hmm. it's very simple yeah just follow the instructions mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. so the boy kevin uh he calls 911 and he says i hurt myself and i feel sick and then the operator asks why he they, they say, can you tell me why you're whispering? Yeah, is there someone else there is with you? Is there someone else there with you? Okay, you got to stay on the phone with me. And I, he must pass out or something. He drops the phone. And then, the what, there's like shots where there's like a flashlight moving. Around. That's when we, we see the toy phone that I think has become so synonymous with this movie. Apparently, the phone that he was on turns into the toy phone. And that's why he asks, how did you do that? Oh, to the voice. I didn't catch that. I didn't catch it either. I was reading and I was like, oh, okay. So apparently the phone he was on calling 911 turns into this toy phone, it's the, which is a huge scare. Yeah. Jesus. That, it's, so the phone, it's, it's, I don't know. Are they Fisher Price? I don't know. It's that little, it's like the white telephone. It's like a face with the red. It, it's like a white base with the red phone. It's got the little face on the front. And the eyes are just peering out of the Bulbous. darkness of this movie. Yeah. It terrifying. And the eyes like kind of move too. It's fucked up, man. Fuck that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There is a, and I, I was sad I had this screenshot spoiled. I was waiting for it the whole time of these eyes in the dark. But it comes it up still suddenly. It scared yeah. the fucking shit out of me mm -hmm. because it just, all of a sudden you see these eyes and they're huge. And yeah, it's revealed. It's, it's this fucking phone. Hi. <laughs> Molly. She's getting scared. We're she's talking getting, about. She's getting ring. Getting anyway, so the the entity, I guess we'll call we'll sure. call it, says that uh, the sister didn't do what she was told, so that's why he took away her eyes and mouth. Yeah, because she she kept calling for her parents, so he took away her mouth. Yeah, and when Kevin asks, "How did you do that?" it says, "I can do anything," which lends itself to that interpretation of it being the director but yeah I, I i like that i think once we get to like the end we'll we'll, we'll talk about, interpretations yeah, yeah. for sure man the thing that i i love about the phone too and that shot of the the eyes is it made me think of how one of the things that humans um are most kind of ingrained to recognize is fear in another person. And that's when you see the whites of someone's eyes on top of their pupils. Mm -hmm. Like there have been studies. I literally have studies in my notes. This one is from the Max Planck Institute for Human Cognitive and Brain Sciences in Leipzig. 
they uh, conducted these tests with babies and um, they showed them pictures of eyes, just eyes with no other features. Um, and babies react to eyes that are scared where you see the like whites above the pupils. Like ever since we're infants, we know to un like we understand when someone is scared because that's like probably it's an evolutionary trait, right? If someone in our, our pack or whatever is scared, mm -hmm. then we know to be vigilant or to be alert. But what I find interesting is like, why the fuck is a little kid's toy? You know, it's got those eyes. Why are they so scared? That's what's <laughs> freaky about that thing, you know, that phone. Yeah. And I think that's maybe why he picked that toy specifically to be such a scare because there is something so freaky about that thing. And because it's so ubiquitous, I feel like everyone had that fucking phone when they were kids. It's such a... I think, it, is that phone in Toy Story or at least some kind of version of maybe. it in one of the later ones? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just weird that the design of such a famous children's toy, if we look at what that face is telling us, that phone is scared. <laughs> it's really creepy. I don't yeah. know. But I like that choice. And I think that it's a perfect little mascot for this movie. <laughs> yeah, because we see him at least once more after that. Oh, yeah. So is this the looping blood? Yeah. It's about that? So, yeah, there's a shot of, like, blood splattering onto the floor and like is there screaming going on yeah there's screaming and then it's just this loop of like screaming and then there's blood being kind of like shot across the floor and, and then the a blood cabinet. disappears and then it happens again and it keeps happening and then you realize oh this is kind of like that cartoon that with was the looping, rabbit yeah with the rabbit who was crushing himself and then you realize that's kind of what's happening presumably to kevin he's being crushed and you're seeing his blood squirt out and it's happening over, over and, and over, over and over again and kevin's like calling for his mommy and it's real fucked up yeah it's really scary i didn't put that together until i read a review and then realized fuck that's uh really dark yeah i found the blood splattering uh unsettling yeah, while watching yeah. it but then again like you said i reading it later was like oh that's fucked up um, and then it says 572 days. Yeah. So what the fuck? It's just <laughs> kept them all. It's kept the kids in here because we see the sister again, but she like disappears into the wall. Is it the sister or the no, mom? No, I think that's the mom who's like head disappears and then body disappears. It's really creepy. And then they show all those family pictures where everyone's bodies are like erased. Yeah. And then all the toys are stacked up and the shot like... This is a very House of Leaves shot. This is this is such a cool sequence of shots. It's all these toys that are stacked up. And I, is the shot upside down or is it that the toys are on the ceiling? I think they're on the ceiling because that's what we've been seeing. And the shot just keeps trucking farther and farther back with like a like series of fades. And distant. it's this insanely long, long hallway. And then we see the outside of the house. And it looks like a little toy house. It's like... No one, it's a house that you draw in school that no one actually lives in, where it's just the like basic shape with a door and two windows mm -hmm. on it. It's such a neat, like, I don't know, like kind of composite shot. Uh, I wrote here, I'm done being skin and ringed now, please, because <laughs> I was so scared. Well, I mean, there's just the one shot, right? The, the final shot. There is this blurry face man and it i mean it starts with like one of those just all black shots and then and then this face just kind of slowly starts to form. emerges it's like a white face and it's very it's just like black dots for eyes and the slightest the bit of a slightest smile. smile yeah you can barely make out any features which is why it's so creepy yeah it fucking sucks and i couldn't because i was not looking at the screen i was so <laughs> scared does the entity have the last lines or is it kevin it's kevin asking What's your name? What's your name to the entity a couple of times? And there's no response. And then that, that ends. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a fucking nightmare. <laughs> but I've read a lot of really cool theories. And what was your... Did you have like a gut reaction after? Like, did you have a... Oh, okay. I kind of think this is what it was going for. Uh, Nothing outside of entity trapped kids in house and tortures them for eternity yeah you know your basic thing <laughs> your basic yeah <laughs> i kind of at first my read of it was 
like loss of childhood innocence because you get that the parents are divorced and she says I don't want to talk about mom anymore and maybe some kind of malevolent either adult or I don't know being taking advantage of that of Mm -hmm. like the end of childhood and having childhood kind of ripped away from you Mm -hmm. I don't know realizing that your parents are people kind of thing. Yeah. But I didn't have anything more concrete than that. Molly, are you you good? She wants you. She's so fucking obsessed with you. I Wait. thought maybe I could share the burden, you know? But no, I'm just like, I'm just one of those dudes who helps carries the cross at like a tiny bit, and then she's like, I need it back. <laughs> right? And the stations of the cross. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I forget which, which dudes are those. I would have known that during our Passion of the Christ episode. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. That knowledge, I wouldn't do very well at Bible trivia now. <laughs> Gotta speed read the Bible again. Um, Yeah, so there's like the coma interpretation, especially I think like the 572 days kind of lends itself to that. And I read an interesting comment on Reddit from someone who was in an accident where they were in a coma. Mm-hmm. And they said that they experienced dreams that were very similar to this, where it was just all things familiar to them, but eventually not remembering faces or or layouts of places and stuff and just this kind of weird in-between space. And if uh, the kid had damaged his eye in the Mm -hmm. fall, that's the whole put the knife in your eye type thing. You know, I'm, I'm hurt and I feel weird. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'm assuming, you know, the, the end of that interpretation is the kid dies and uh it doesn't make it sorry there was another read on reddit that i liked that was about the pitfalls of nostalgia like childhood nostalgia Mm. or just wanting to be a child forever and it's something that you know like culturally now we live in kind of a eh, how do i put this without pissing off a ton of people (laughs) just we live in you know like comic book movies are huge and you know disney adults and i am a disney adult all right i love going to the disney parks and shit there's plenty of like kid stuff i love yeah but our parents when they were 33 were not you know buying up their childhood toys and watching the shows that they grew up watching, you know, right. it, it, our generation is definitely like, we're obsessed with nostalgia. Yes. I mean, you look at like all the IP and stuff and everything is sequels or reboots or yeah. Like collecting, like adults collecting toys. That's something the movie Megan makes fun of a little bit is yeah. adults who are like, this isn't a toy. Well, it is a toy, but it's a collectible and yeah. don't take it out of the box kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I say I say it with love because there are plenty of childhood things I'm obsessed with. I have, have a Pokemon plush that sleeps in our bed. The top shelves of our closet is all plushes. Yeah. There's oh so yeah. So many stuffed animals. Yeah. Like, you know, we're millennials. It happens. <laughs> <laughs> but you think of like the things in this movie. It's it, there's so many there's so much imagery of cartoons and toys. Um, and like cereal, like breakfast cereal, and it's all made into something really scary and how being trapped in there with that and not letting yourself be an adult. I don't know. I thought that was kind of an interesting read on it. Yeah. The director one I like because it was like, how did you do that? I can do anything. Yeah. The the director. Yeah. The The idea that a director can do whatever he wants to the characters in his movie. uh, Or literally do anything in post-production. Right. You know, and then the looping kill is like take after take after take of something torturing your actors as some directors are wont to do. Uh, Oh, so you read it as kind of a, I think there's two ways to go with that. It, it, is it kind of more metaphorical where, yeah, it's about take after take of an actor on set and you just are making them go and or just working them until yeah. the point of exhaustion. I mean, he did cite Kubrick as an inspiration. <laughs> okay, sure. But then there's also, I kind of like this idea of, you know, those old cartoons. I think there's a Daffy Duck one where the Duck-a-muck? animator is drawing yeah, Daffy. Yeah, Duck Is that Duck Amuck? I'm pretty sure Duck Run Amuck or something where it's like that. Like he breaks the, the fourth the, wall yeah. mm-hmm. and maybe there's, 
I don't know, the idea of the director being that. And so these kids are real kids in a real house, but there is this director making a movie and actually smushing this kid over and over again because it's his movie and he can. Yeah, yeah. And the character is aware of that. Mm -hmm. Like the Daffy Duck cartoon where he's being erased and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I suspect that if it wasn't expensive as fuck, I think Duck and Muck would have been a really good fit for the TV Oh, sure. In there. But, but yeah, like even just making the things disappear to trap them in there. Yeah. Like the director can do that. It's fine. Are you good? Do you All have the... to go outside? No, she's just being a little... She's being her... You're going to get trained so hard, Molly. Oh, uh, no, let's not go out to where the cat is or else you're going to regret that, Molly. And there, one day, you're going to fucking step too far and Lucy's going to show you why she's the big sister. There was another read of this that I loved that was from a blog by Jonathan Wojcik, uh, Bizarre Movie Monsters. Uh, He wrote a review of Skin and Marink that I thought was so cool and so thorough. I, I, I just was so impressed by it. I can put a link to it in the description. But basically it, he thinks that this kind of entity, rather than being um, what a demon normally is in a horror movie where a demon's usually it's it's ancient it's old we get the sense it's it's adult right it (sighs) knows what it is doing it has purpose it is able to like make decisions and is capable of being evil but this writer thinks that the entity in this is also a child tormenting two other kids because you think of how kids act when they play with each other and they are selfish, they will hoard toys, they will hit other kids. They, you know, kids can be fucking awful, you know? And you think of like the way kids even play with toys. Like we had Barbie dolls growing up that we would just like be torture. And I feel like every kid ends up doing that. If you give kids Barbie dolls, you end up just fucking them up more often than you make them look cute or Mm -hmm. brush their hair, put them in little dresses. (laughs) Like, Kids are are creepy, <laughs> and this movie feels like this kind of child playing with the two actual kids in a dollhouse and just basically just mashing them together and doing what it wants and, like, ripping their limbs off or whatever, like, you would do to a toy. Yeah. And I think that that's a very, very cool read of this. Yeah. Because you also think of, yeah, like a, a dollhouse, that really long shot of the house from the exterior. I think I think is great evidence for this theory being pretty sound because that house from the outside looks fake. It does look like a toy house. Mm-hmm. I don't know, but I, I liked that a lot. I'll post a link to that guy's review in the description. Yeah. But either way, I think any read of this is valid. I don't know that the director has said it's anything specific i think it really is just kind of a nightmare scape that you can project whatever onto i'd be curious if there is an official read of this but i think even if there is one he's not gonna put it out there because that's no fun yeah you don't want to close off other interpretations yeah yeah exactly yeah so again this movie's not going to be for everyone uh if you watch it and you don't like it that's fine you don't have to we don't like, gotta like everything. We don't gotta like everything. We mm-hmm. don't like everything. But just understand that some people legit do like it. And that's fine too. Yeah, it makes me want to also watch The Outwaters, which I've heard is very scary. I saw and a came comparison. out this year. Yeah, to that. So I saw a review of that that said The Outwaters is the closest I've come to feeling like I'm going to die watching something. I was like, cool. <laughs> I wanna watch that. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds great. I saw someone say it, it reminded me of the fears and anxieties I had as a kid where I can remember the feeling, but not the reasoning. Sure. But you just remember having having that fear and confusion. And this movie really taps into it. It's just a, such a solid little mood piece. I don't know what you think of being a kid and how scary that kind of existence is. And you're not even aware of that when you are a kid and all your needs are taken care of because you're so you're the most vulnerable kind of person that if people just decide not to take care of you 
you know, you're just left to fend for yourself. Like, what, what do you do? Yeah. You're that young. It's, yeah, it's scary. You have to put so much trust into the adults around you. And you don't, you're not, like, aware of that unless something happens to you, I guess, as a kid. Mm -hmm. And then when you're, when you're an adult and you look back and you're like, oh, my God, my parents are just random people. <laughs> yeah. Just taking care of me and I didn't die, you know? <laughs> I don't know. That's all we can ask for. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, Molly. I can tell you're over this. You're over Skinamarink and you want to go outside. Molly thinks Skinamarink is super overrated and boring. Yeah, even though she was definitely scared, but yeah. she's putting up a front. Yeah. I think everyone liked the look under the bed scene, it seemed like. I think that was when the movie clicked for a lot of people. And I'm now putting together when we were lucky enough to go out to dinner with Mike Flanagan. Kate yeah. Siegel and we were talking about this movie oh yeah Mike was saying he ha he struggled with it because he had a screener and he said he chunks. started it a couple times and was like eh, I, I don't know but then finally made it to the part uh, and he started describing you know when there's like the they're, they go into the room and there's like a per and we were like no oh, we haven't seen it yet. and it must have been it the scene with the that, parents yeah. cool um thanks for listening to our scream episode last week i do i do want to actually review the movie maybe we'll do it when it comes out on blu-ray oh or something uh maybe i'll probably want to kill count it pretty quickly after that oh sure but i know i do <laughs> we gave you guys an hour long behind the scenes making of and a lot of comments were like well that's cool but can we get like a review too <laughs> it's like i uh, yeah i guess i mean we liked it uh, spoiler we liked it spoiler we liked it yeah <laughs> yeah uh, I, I even had half a mind of like if skinnamarink doesn't fill an hour should we just tack on a scream six review to the end of it and just real fast but i think uh it did end up f filling the hour yeah definitely yeah we, well i also want to do survivor yeah i want to put together survivor mm -hmm. we'll definitely do that sometime before the season ends well, you know, we're going to, we have more travel ahead of us. So. Yeah. Uh, thanks for putting up with the weird schedule. Everything's weird right now. Um, that's why you got two episodes in a row mm -hmm. to make up for, I don't know, weeks that we've had to skip. And there's going to be more skipped weeks in the future. It's all kind of fucky right now. So thanks for, for bearing with us. But for sure, we'll have the Dead Meat Horror Awards out on Sunday, the 26th. Mm -hmm. I think a uh, 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific premiere time on the channel we just got our last presenters video today so we have all of our presenters videos we filmed our parts the edits on it's, all the categories are done it's it's pretty much done i think mike just has to finish his montage and then we got all the pieces it's gonna look so good this year yes yeah it, it looks real good uh i can't wait to share it it's gonna be great yeah and um the 28 Days Later Kill Count has to come out this Friday because there's a sponsor. So that'll be out uh, the 24th. So it'll be you're getting a lot yeah. this week. You get you get Skidamarink today, and then two days you get the 28 Days Later Kill Count, and then two days after that, fucking award show. Mm -hmm. So you're eating good. And also look at that dog. And then you got a fucking dog. Look at this. Look at this thing. It's a little Muppet. That's a beanie baby. Yeah. Do, do, do. <laughs> All right. All Where right. can we find us? Well, you can find us on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Dead Meat James. And I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Carebeck, C R E V E C C, on Twitter and Instagram. <laughs> I fucked that up. And <laughs> you want merch, deadmeatstore.com. <laughs> Hi, sweetie. Oh. Um, anything else? No, look at her. I She's so it. cute. Yeah. <laughs> if you're just listening to this, you're missing out on the fluffiest little baby. <laughs> We call her Coconut Baby. We do call her Coconut Baby. All right. Until next time, I'm James. I'm Chelsea. That's Coconut Baby. <laughs> and this has been the Dead Meat Podcast.